And uh, Sergeant Burroughs, I wanted to ask you, uh, were you aware at the time that uh, Sergeant Penniston was sending this to the OSI folks? And, or no, no, sir. You weren't. When did you learn about S Sergeant I, Penniston's I can't, submittals? I can't give you the exact date. Approximate, please. It was in the early 90s when Colonel Hall okay. released the three statements. So and why? there was more information coming out. Okay. Uh, that, that is one of our questions, number one, why the memo was ever released. Number two, why the tape was ever released, and number three, why our statements were released. All that was done after we were told it was going to remain classified and we didn't have to worry about it any longer. Uh huh. And, and give me again a sense of the dates on those real quickly here. The the of when those different releases oh, occurred. The oh. memo came out, I believe, yeah. in '83, right, Nick? When News of the World took it. Yes, in 1983, the memo through Freedom of Information Act was released to the general public. Shortly after the tape was released and put all over the air, and last but not least, our statements were released in early in the early 90s by Colonel Hall. Okay. And one thing I'd like to add, yeah. this is my take personally from talking to the colonel. I believe he wants to talk more, but because it's still classified, I believe he feels, and he's gone on the record saying that that he'd be willing to talk about what he knew. If okay. the members of Congress would bring him in, swear him in, and he would have the protection given to him to talk about what is classified and what's going on. Okay, let me make sure I understand. Is this the same colonel that worked for Gabriel at the time? No, Colonel no. Halt was the deputy oh, base commander. Oh, there. Okay, there's two, their names are similar. Right. right. Colonel okay. Halt, I believe, would come forward, and he's made statements to the fact that okay. he would be willing to testify everything he knew in front of Congress. Okay. Well, let me just ask you then that if Nick, you know, or if. Uh, Sergeant Peniston, you know, or anybody else that might know. Within a day or two of the December 26th or first sighting, let's say, the memo clearly showed some indents in the part of the forest where you described the craft as being. Am I right about that? That's correct. There's there was no question about. There's, there's no a, question. None. That he he and he wrote that memo. The colonel that was assigned to General uh, Gabriel. That we did that did get released from. That was the one letter. Or the one memo we had was. I'm just trying to make I'm sure I got this right. I'm not sure where he's going with this. Okay. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just trying to gather data. Oh, oh. Excuse me, just one moment. Uh, the gentleman, time has expired. Would you like another minute? Sir? Just one minute. Just one okay. last And I apologize. I'll, for, okay. I'll, I'll try to explain the chain of command. Yeah, um, please. General Gabriel was in charge of the entire USAFE area. Right. Okay. General Baisley was the 3rd Air Force commander. Okay. Um, Colonel Halt would have worked for Colonel Conrad and General Williams. So okay. he wrote the memo, and right. the way the story was told was he was told to, after General Williams took the tape to General Baisley, and they came back, this was the exact words of Colonel Hall. The uh, staff got together, reviewed the tape, and they said, uh, we don't want to touch this. This is a British problem. Come back, General Williams came back to Colonel Hall and said, go ahead and write up a brief memo and brief the British on what happened. Okay, but he def that memo definitely talks about those indentation. It definitely talks about a much higher than normal radiation level yes. that he checked out a day later. Okay, that's what I needed to understand. Thank you. I yield back any time. Thank you. No, no.